I was growing up, I moved around a lot of different places. So that gave me a lot of experiences of understanding how to be the new person. And um, since I've been eight, I lived in California. Loved California, it was awesome. And when I graduated from high school, my parents said, we're moving to Missouri. I said, what, Missouri? So I went to college in Texas. That's how I ended up in Texas. I came here to do my undergrad at Abilene Christian. I love children. So every other path I was trying to do was going to end up getting to a point where I was working with children. But why don't I just start with an undergrad that I can get started working with children anyway? So I moved my major then to education and it felt like that's where I should have been in the first place. But I still had this desire that I wanted to leave. Not my job, but Texas. I still really wanted to move to the Pacific Northwest. So I did what any 22 year old person does and I get a second job. It's okay that I'm a teacher, no big deal, I'll get a second job. So I started waitressing because one of my friends from college from my communication days was now the manager at a restaurant in Abilene. So I start waitressing, love it. It's like such a fun way of getting to communicate with a bunch of different people for fun and make money. I'm saving up money, everything's great. And I meet somebody there that turns my entire world upside down. And instead of moving to the Pacific Northwest, I end up getting married and staying in West Texas. <laughs> Had, um, after we had four children together, we decided that um, it was time for us to expand our horizons. The last job fair on my schedule was for CFB. It was still in April. It was still early, but some of the people had had job fairs really early that year. So it was in April, and I remember talking to, um, I interviewed for River Chase Elementary, and Holly Barber was the principal at the time. Loved my time at River Chase, and when we had moved into Coppell um, and bought a house there, I was actually offer the opportunity to work at the school two blocks from my house where my kids went to school. So taught in Coppell third grade and kindergarten, loved it. And then after I had been teaching a while, I still had this desire to really continue to impact change beyond my classroom. Then we also decided right about the same time, my oldest had graduated from high school. So I had graduated from kindergarten, graduated from high school, and my youngest, the graduating kindergartner, he kept begging us for a little brother. Just, Mom, I just want a little brother. I said, well, dude, you know, we're not gonna, no, Mom, I just want a little brother. And my husband and I had always said, if we ever have more children, we would adopt. Spring break, we're on a trip, driving across the country with our kids, and we get a phone call. Hey, Mr. and Ms. Padilla, we have some good news. We have a sibling set of three that we think would be a perfect fit for your family. Didn't necessarily see it then, but I can see how it's connected. And um, I've had, some other opportunities, but when I was interviewing for CFB, it really felt like everything that I've done really did prepare me to be where I'm at right now. It really um, has set me up to understand what it's like to be the newcomer, whether from when I was young or from when I was an administrator. It's really helped me understand the population. My husband's family is Hispanic and they're first generation Americans, so I understand um, from seeing through his eyes some of the different challenges that their families had, and I have an empathy that I would not have had otherwise. Um, I understand that kids have challenges that are not always easily seen or easily addressed, but throughout all of that, one of the things that's propelled me the most is that I don't give up on people. Because of all those experiences and all those challenges, I don't give up on a kid. I don't give up on a parent, whether they're a challenge or not. I don't give up on a teacher. If a teacher is willing to try and work harder, I'm there for you. As long as a person is willing to keep growing, we can go forward. Because I've seen it. I've seen it happen professionally. I've seen it happen personally. I've seen it happen all throughout my life that when you give that effort, even if your life is really challenging and really hard, when you give that effort and you get the help you need, you can go on and, get, and really get stronger. Now we're at Blanton and it's been so exciting. that the, the campus here has already been so, um, embracing. I was able to meet with them all at the very end of the school year, the last work day when they were all exhausted. I was able to meet with all the teams and really hear some of the things that they love about Blanton and really see um, see the things that they value so that we can keep going forward and moving forward. And we professional learning communities through our STEM academies, really learning from each other to build it up so it's evident. I want my students to know that I believe in them no matter what. I always told my students that we don't say something's hard. We say, I can try and I can do it. And the other thing we always say is, Dr. Badir will always love you, no matter what. We said that over and over and over. And I could ask a child that graduated from my class 10 years ago and they could still tell me that that's true. And that's really what I want them to know, that there's nothing they can do that would keep me from welcoming them and loving them here at school. 
but I'm also going to hold them to really high expectations because I believe in what they can do. I'm going to welcome them and say this is where you are and this is where we're going. I want the parents to know that it's definitely a team effort. I know that they are working very hard. They are, they are giving us their most prized possession every day for eight hours a day. That's huge. That's a gift to me to be able to have somebody trust me with their child for that big of a chunk of a day. But I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that our teachers do their best to give their child what the education they need. I want them to partner with us the best they can. But I know that we're doing the education piece. They're doing the family loving piece, and together we can combine that together to have a child that's well rounded and ready to face the world. But I'm I'm there for them to be their partner. When a child leaves Blanton Elementary, I want them to not only have the confidence to know that they can do the next steps, but to also have um, the problem solving skills to be able to do that to where they are going to face problems whether it's their lock accommodation doesn't work or they sit down and realize they don't know a single person in that class or did we ever are you sure I'm ready for this math class I want them to realize no matter what problem they face as they go forward they have the skills and experiences to face it because when they're in elementary school I want them to have problems to solve so they can work together get a peer to help you Get a teacher to help you. Think inside your mind, what do I know to help me solve this problem? Because we can't give them every piece of knowledge that they need for the rest of their life. But I can give them the ability to find out how to get that knowledge. And if they have a problem, we as a school can help give them the problem solving skills to be able to tackle that problem. So I want, I want, the, I want our Bulldogs to be able to just bulldoze their way through and make those relationships and solve the problems as they come to them.